Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to each and every one of you. Another blessed Sunday, another day that God has created in spite of what is happening around the world. We are here today to gather together and give God the praises and glory because no matter what, God is God and he's still sitting on the throne. And he wants us to come before him on this particular day that God has created that all the people will come before him to hear the word what God has for you today. This is a bilingual ministry and I pray that you will be blessed. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hestima House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo oro que esta media hora que se ha bendecido con la palabra del Señor. Y no solamente para este día, pero para siempre. Porque el Señor todavía está sentado en su trono. Y no importa lo que está pasando en el mundo. Él quiere que nosotros, unidos, vinimos presente en la presente de, la presente de Dios. Y yo oro que sea bendecido este día. Again, I pray that you'll be blessed. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, which many of you already know. You know it by heart by now. Chapter 22. And the word of the Lord reads. Chapter 22, verse 12 to 16. And the word reads, I, Jesus, am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robe, and they that they may end that they have the right to the tree of life, and men and may go through the gate into the city. Outside are dogs, those who practice magic arts the sexual immorality, the murderer, the idolatrous, and everyone who loves and practice falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. You know, as we come to the end of this cycle of the church calendar, and we go into the Advent, the awaiting time of Jesus' arrival, because we don't know what time and date Jesus is coming the second time. But we celebrate and we remember the gift that Jehovah God gave to the people. So as we end this calendar year of the church, we, get, we come before the Lord with thanksgiving and blessing to God. Let's go to the Psalm 100. Vamos para el libro de los Salmos, capítulo 100. Let's go to the Psalm 100. And then it reads, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we worship are his. We are his. We are the people. And the shepherd, excuse me, we are his people and sheep of his pastor. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continued through all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading from the song of King David. It's the second king of Israel. Beloved, there is a lot that is happening. And we continue to pray. And we continue to uphold those who have been devastated by the two wars that is happening around the world. And we pray that there will be some kind of reconciliation that there will be no more bloodshed. 
But this is why we come before the Lord, because God is still God and he's still sitting on the throne. And we bring all our petition to him and we give him thanksgiving because you are able to be here today, beloved. You're able to be here on this particular day. Many of you will be different parts of the world are celebrating different holidays in this new month that is coming, the end of the year next month. Many of you will be celebrating your faith in different ways. But I just want to remind you that God is God. We didn't made ourselves. God made us. He did. And Jesus Christ sent his angel to give you the word. Let's go to the gospel of Matthew, beloved. Let's go to the gospel of Matthew. Chapter 25, vamos para el libro de Evangelico, el libro de Mateo, capítulo 25, versículo 31. Y la palabra dice, and the word reads, When the Son of Man comes in all his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will, gather, will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separate the sheep from the goat. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick, you looked after me. I was in prison, you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, fed you, or thirsty, and gave and come to to um, gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invited you in, or needed clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison, and go to visit you? The king would answer, reply, "Truly, I tell you." Whatever you did for one of these least brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me. You, you who are a curse into eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and uh, sick and, and in prison, you did not look after me. They was they will answer him. They will answer him saying, they will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? thirsty or a stranger or needed clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for me or the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Let's pray. Blessed God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you glorify yourself in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. With the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let the words that I speak and let everything that comes out of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you. Let all those who are listening at this moment open up their eyes and their ears and their hearts Give them understanding and wisdom and knowledge and to reveal you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. What is happening here 
You know, many of you are celebrating. By the time you view this ministry, many of you have been celebrating Thanksgiving, Veterans Day, and um, in different parts in, around the world, celebrate Thanksgiving. The Native American Indians will be celebrating their holidays too. What does this mean? Here, Jesus Christ address his followers as brothers and sisters. Oh, yes, those who have received Jesus Christ, he's our brother. He's our brother. And he's not ashamed to call us brother and sister. He's our brother, Jesus Christ. He's our king. He's our savior. He's our redeemer. He is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He's a wonderful counselor, a counselor, 24 hours. I don't need to put a retainer to get counsel from a wonderful king. You know, my mother should say, she had a saying. She goes, Thanksgiving is every day. We give God Thanksgiving, we give him blessings, and we honor him and revere him. You know, she was right. But we was young and we would say, but mom, Thanksgiving is a special day. I said, yes. She would say, yes. But Thanksgiving is every day. She knew where her blessings were coming from. Oh, absolutely. How many of us are so busy trying to earn money? How many of us are so busy to advance ahead and still finding it difficult. How many of us has trampled over other people in order to advance yourself? How many of you have done that? I see it. I see it all the time, beloved. How many of you will refuse? I remember, let me, let me give you a scenario. I remember there was a family that mistreated me really bad. And they knew that I was a minister, that I was calling to ministry, but they abused me. And I didn't say anything to them. I let them be. I prayed for them. And then there were several years went by that I was doing some ministerial work. And I was called upon to visit someone that needed to be visited. I was in the vicinity. I went and visited that person. But guess what? That person was the same person that abused me and mistreated me. That person was grateful that I was there and made sure that the person received all the care all the way to the end. Going beyond the call of duty the hours went by, I was there to support the family. Hours to past midnight. Here I am. Eight o'clock in the morning. I get this call. I'm there past midnight with this family that abused me and mistreated me. But I was there to show compassion. Because Jesus died for that person going that extra mile how far would you go an extra mile you know we just finished celebrating veterans day a lot of the veterans have gone that extra mile when they have seen they mate that have gotten lost they didn't turn around and said forget about that mate he's lost i'm not going to go out there and get killed but that veteran went out there in search for his partner. Going that extra mile. Going that extra mile. Hallelujah. Beloved, how many of you, you are raising different flags to support a cause. But the flag that Jesus wants you to raise is the flag to take care with your brothers and sisters. 
your brothers and sisters in Christ. And not only that, strangers. Jesus Christ gives a policy how to be. Because many of us are a bunch of savage. Oh, yes. We don't know how to behave. Jesus gave us an error. He gives us, he gives us an understanding what it is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. When you did it to these brothers and sisters, you did it to me. Many of you, Jesus is not into pronouns. Jesus is not into whatever you are into. Jesus wants you to do what is right. Go that extra mile for your fellow man. Go, don't be saying, oh, I work all the time. Oh, what they can't get a job. My tax dollars is paying for these prisoners. Why, are they, why should I go and visit them? That's when you're wrong. I remember many times that I was told those words. When I was doing the ministry in the prison ministry, people would say, why are you going over there? It was a calling. Many of you have made some messed up life decision and people don't know about it. Some of you are hiding in the closet. Some of these people that are in prison, they need to see and they need to have some hope. Oh, you might say, but I pay enough money for them, you know, throw away the key. That's when you're wrong. Yes, many people have done things wrong and they're paying the price in there. When you say those awful things, you become a judge. How many of you organization in your own community that send you envelopes that they need some funds to their, or they ask for donation, sometimes just $5? How many of you have spent more than $5 on your video games, on your gamers? How many of you? You go out? I see you. Those restaurants are full. You spend more than five dollars. How many of you have spent thousands and hundreds of dollars on clothing? You only wear it one time. Then you just either is sitting in your closet instead of clothing someone. And one thing I do want to say, be careful what you give the clothing that you give out. It's a disgrace how some people will give clothing all without being washed, well, full of stain and rip, and expect someone to wear that. Why do we do horrible things like that? When we don't need something, get the very best. I was hungry. Many of us are always Thanksgiving in the United States and some parts of the world. The blessings that has been given to us. How many of you have gone beyond the call of duty when the community food shelf or the food bag asked for donation? How many of you have said, you know, let me buy a turkey? Let me bring it over to the food shelf, to the food bag. Jesus talks about whenever you've done it to one of these, you've done it to, to me. And then those, beloved, and those who do not, you are too busy trying to move up ahead. And you're able to slander and lie and do horrible things. And you think that nobody's going to notice. You're trying to get ahead. What for? Are you going that extra mile to help somebody else? Are you going an extra mile to help your neighbors and those in front of you? Or are you going to complain? You're going to complain. Jesus is serious. When he, he talks about this. You know, we don't know what time and day Jesus is coming. We don't know that but we could tell the season how things are going. We don't know, it could come at any time. 
let's get our life together. You know, we're going into a new year. And I just want to say to you, if you think that year 2023 was easy, prepare yourself for 2024. If you thought 2023 was difficult, we don't know what's going to happen next year, but it's not going to be easy. That's the one thing I'm going to tell you right now. So as we assess from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, who are we as a human being, as a society? What kind of banner are you raising? What kind of flag are you raising? Are you raising a flag, that banner that give God the glory? Or are you raising a banner like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out there, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna fix. But I challenge you. I challenge you today, before the end of the year, I challenge you. And I speak to those from 35 and under. I challenge you. Look at your neighborhood. Look at your neighbor. The snow is coming. Winter is coming. Check and see whether your neighbor needs the front of the front out needs to be shoveled with snow. I challenge you. Oh, yes. And God will be witness to what you do. You know, many of us, and it's wonderful that we get together and we do great things. But the most precious thing in God's eyes, when it's nobody's looking and you do the things that pleases him. So I challenge you this year before the year is over and even the beginning of next year, how you helping the most two vulnerable people in society is the elderly and children. They are the most two vulnerable people in this society, not only in this world, in this United States, but around the world. Children and the elderly are the most vulnerable. So those of you who are young and you feel like, oh, I need to get ahead, but I challenge you, look around in front of you. Anyone that is in the 62 and up of age, they are considered the most vulnerable citizen in this country. I challenge you to shovel the snow. I challenge you, if you see an elderly person in the supermarket and they can't reach up a particular item, help them out. I challenge you, oh yes. Oh, I'm not doing a fundraising, but I challenge you. Jesus was saying, come to my right hand, or come to my left hand. Jesus is serious when he talks about the separation of the sheep and goats. Jesus talks about that how we, he calls our brothers and sisters. He wants you to understand that the word that Jesus says, he says that heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot of the word will fail. It will be fulfilled. So I challenge you. You have the Red Cross in your community. You have the food shelf in this community. You have different organizations in the community. Have you sent a thank you card to our firefighters in our community? Have you said thank you to our first responders in our community? Because without them, they, they go through a lot spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Have you taken the time and says, you know, let me take this over there to the fire department. Let me send a thank you card. And those that you see, have you been praying for your brothers and sisters and even strangers, not only here in the United States, but around the world? Are you praying for peace? Are you praying that there will be no more bloodshed? You might say, but I can't fly there, but you have the power to preach. You have the power to pray. Oh, yes. You have the power to help those that are in front of you today, beloved. Jesus is serious. You know, many times people say, oh, that Jesus is weak. He's nice. Oh, yeah, he's nice. But Jesus is bold, too. He was saying, the ones on the left, you are prepared to go to hell with the devil and his followers. 
and then those on the right, that it has been prepared for them from the beginning of the foundation. Just like the book of Song 100. We didn't make ourselves, God made us. God gave us the rich and the poor, and God watches what we do with, with the resources we have. You might say, but I'm not rich. But I tell you something, you are rich because you have what you have. How are you helping someone else? Are you you want to get advanced and complain? Because that's what you do. You complain. If things hum, if things get too difficult, you don't want to go that extra mile. Oh no. You don't want to go that extra mile. What you do, you complain. And eventually you will fail because Jesus will say, I don't know you. Jesus wants you to come into his kingdom and be placed on the right hand side with the rest of the righteous one. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was cold, you bought you, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. So I speak to the those who are progressive, those who are. You think that you know it all, but you don't. Get your life together. This is what Jesus is saying. And he's serious. There is no middle. There is no bit. Either do the right thing or the wrong thing. And those who do right will come into the kingdom of heaven. And those who will do wrong will go with the devil in hell. Eternal fire. These are not my words. These are the words of the living God, Jesus Christ, that he makes it perfectly clear. He says by his brothers and sisters that the least that you have done for these brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. So let's take time. And I challenge you in your community. I challenge you for you have a renewing of your mind. I challenge you that this winter, that you will help your neighbor and shovel the snow in front of the house. Or you will knock on their door. And not, I'm not talking about you getting money, making money out of it. No, you do it because it is the right thing to do. I challenge you for you to donate funds to your local food shelf, food bank. I challenge you that you send or write a letter to your first responders in your community. I challenge you that you will help those who do not know certain things and not complain. I challenge you. So before the end of the year, do a checks and balance because this is what Jesus wants you to do. He loves you. He cares about you. But he's giving you so many chances. As we come into the new calendar year of Advent and we await for our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know the time and day. We don't know. Only the God, but Jehovah knows. Jesus Christ, not even the angels know. But each day we should live as Jesus is coming at any time. So beloved, if you have not received Jesus and you want to be considered a brother and sister of Jesus Christ, because that's what he calls us, brothers and sisters, you say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Be my Lord and Savior automatically, but you have to meet him and you have to get to know who Jesus Christ is by reading his words. Oh, yes. And he will guide you. And if you're looking for a church, contact me and I will share with you the community of ministers or churches when in the area. Oh, yes. This is not for the righteous only. This is for those who are sinners because we all fall short of the glory of God. But because of God's mercy, God's love, and God's compassion towards us and his grace, he has given us Jesus Christ and showed us the way. Nobody else. Jesus is the only way. There is no one else, beloved. So as we enter a new season of the church calendar, which is Advent, continue to do the will of Jesus Christ. He will say, come. Whenever you did it for one of these brothers and sisters, you did it for, to me. Can you imagine that? Jesus calling us brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God bless you until God brings back together. Let's pray. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
I ask of you, Father, as we come close to the end of the year, that we are able to do what is right and pleasing to you. Watch over them, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your ways. I place them all into your hands, in Jesus' name. Beloved, until God brings us back again next week, may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and do the right thing. Que Jesus will call you brothers and sisters. Oh my goodness sake. Hasta la semana que viene, que sea bendecido en el nombre de Jesucristo. Y yo oro que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo con la misericordia de la gracia y el amor de Dios. Hasta la semana que viene, que sea bendecido. Amén.